For all the international excitement that the FIFA World Cup brings, it's also brought a lot of criticism in Brazil. Some find it hard to digest the billions of dollars being spent on construction when millions of people are struggling just to eat. Tonight, we're focusing on one stadium in particular, built in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. As the CBC's Susan Ormiston reports, some are calling the project a bungle in the jungle. The Amazon captures the imagination, its watery world hiding many wonders. Like Victoria Amazonicus, giant water lilies. But no one could have ever imagined soccer's greatest wonder in the Amazon until now. We're traveling up the Rio Negro, swollen and flooded, with Sergio Brinja, an Amazonian researcher tells us the ecological balance in the world's largest tropical rainforest is easily disrupted. Floods and droughts last longer now. Do you support the World Cup coming to Manaus? I believe that we lost the opportunity. Yeah, I believe we lost the opportunity to work for the Amazon. All this money would be welcome for education, sanitation and research. It's not about the World Cup, but about what is left behind. We leave Sergio to go further down the river, passing the city of Manaus, with its skyscrapers and two million people, surrounded by river villages. These boaters tell us there's a soccer match up ahead in one of the few places not flooded this year. Soccer is simpler here. A field pitch, passionate play, not high-priced salaries and shrines. Yeah, I think the World Cup is going to be the best thing for us. It comes to Brazil and into our hearts. But like everywhere in Brazil, there is no consensus. What do you think of the World Cup? For me, it was an horror. In my opinion, it's horrible. The money invested by the federal government should have gone to housing to help people who live in flooded areas. Only an hour from Manaus by boat, yet a World Cup ticket is hard to get for these kids and too expensive. Two worlds far apart. This weekend, all eyes will be focused on Manaus for the match pitting England versus Italy. Days in advance, the new stadium is still not finished. The natural turf has to be dead smooth, not too dry, kilometers of cable yet to lay, and high wire finishing acts. Designed in the shape of a traditional basket, the seats are the colors of Amazonian fruits. Even local critters are indigenous. The new stadium was built right on top of the old one, torn down. Most of it prefabricated in Portugal. 6,700 tons of steel had to be barged up the Amazon River. Four years and $319 million later, the Arena de Amazonia will host four World Cup games. John Lennon's anthem seems apropos. So here we are at center field, high noon, 34 degrees and high humidity. The English team has been practicing in South Florida just to get used to this. So in a few days, the kickoff, right here. Now the English aren't too happy about playing in this climate. Whoa. They've been complaining. <laughs> it's too hot, <laughs> it's, it's, we know that. Miguel Capobianga has been coordinated the World Cup project for the past four years. Some people say, that the stadium's too big for this place. Beautiful too, it's too beautiful too. I think that it, it is a, a, a different stadium. It's a stadium to, to mark uh, the view of, uh, of the city. Uh, this is the, the new theater of the 21th century. Manaus has had its share of big dreams for a place in the middle of the jungle. The rubber trade made it wealthy once. In 1896, a European-style opera house opened its doors, the Teatro Amazonas. Back then, there was just water on one side, trees on the other. Bon dia. Nonato do Nascimento helped refurbish the theater in the 1970s. Wow. Nonato shows us the ceiling frescoes representing dance, tragedy, opera and music. 
the Venetian chandeliers, the Italian marble, the wrought iron balconies forged in England, all barged up the river just as Amazon wood was exported out. Why did they put such a spectacular opera house in the middle of the jungle? Our people weren't used to listening and appreciating opera, but now the tickets are sold out. Opera house gets packed these days. They're building a, another big theater for sport in Manaus, the new stadium. What do you think of that? When I went there and entered the new state, I felt like I was not in Amazonas. It was like a dream. The cost of that dream has ballooned. World Cup stadiums, 12 of them, budgeted at $1 billion, have chewed up $4 billion. Amidst allegations of corrupt contracts and poor safety records, three workers died here. Still thousands of people got short-term jobs, like these men lining up for one complimentary ticket. He's pretty happy with Croatia versus Cameroon. Hamilton Liawan, an activist, says the World Cup is wasted money. We don't want because it's very expensive for the people, Brazilian people. In Manaus, we don't have education for school, we don't have a hospital. He says the old football club at half the size was just right. The stadium for football, the stadium for it's a big club, but Manaus don't have a big club. So who's going to pay? Me, my friend, all Brazilian people, you are going to pay that. Because the, the stadium is a, a, a white elephant. Before even the first match, the state government is scouring around for private ownership and a new life for the Amazonia. Soccer won't support it. One loose-tongued civil servant even suggested this could become a holding zone for prisoners en route to more permanent jails. Even in faraway Rio de Janeiro, critics weigh in. I don't think there's any future for that stadium whatsoever. Christopher Gaffney is an activist and academic. You have this really high technology stadium in the Amazon where it's either scorching hot or soaking wet. These stadiums tend to have a, a maintenance cost that's 10% of the construction cost per year. And so in 10 years, you end up paying for that stadium again. So for how many years will Amazon State continue to want to pay for the stadium? Politics put it there, he suggests, not economics. Was there politics around bringing it here? Uh, see, 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 see. Yes, I, I think that is a, a political decision, but it's a, uh, a, a political opportunity to present Manaus to the world. When the old people uh, construct our theater, they were looking for a dream. They want to attract an opera house inside the forest. We are uh, attracting a beautiful stadium to the center of the forest. But the strain of first building it and then defending it is showing. The biggest challenge of my life, and I'm very proud of it. You're leaving something behind. Yes, yes. my heart inside of this project. Almost done. Yes, everything is okay. <laughs> On Rua de Cope, the World Cup street, they're madly decorating for a grand soccer party, merging the two great dreams of Manaus, both against the odds. <laughs> Elena Araujo and friends have been stitching streamers for months. It's very good. Many different and new people coming to know our culture, our work, our street. They don't care what outsiders think, that this could be Brazil's bungle in the jungle. The World Cup is coming all the way up here and they best be ready. Another new wonder in the Amazon for as long as it lasts. Susan Olmsted, CBC News, Manaus. Brazil.